Hi guys, welcome to part 2 of this series on building minor progressions. So in the first part, we learned the, the three basic chords. G minor, which is the 4, or what we call as the predominant of the D minor scale. G becomes the 4th interval, right? And then we did the 5 major, which is coming from the harmonic minor scale. And then that resolves to... D minor. So the 5 becomes the primary dominant or the dominant chord if you will and that resolves to the minor tonic and like I said in part 1 we could use the chords or the available chords of both the minor scales natural minor as well as harmonic minor which is a very important approach when you're building minor chord progressions you don't have to always stick with the textbook approach of getting the chords only from that scale you can always borrow it from uh, all of those parallel minor scales, the natural, the harmonic, even the Dorian and sometimes even the melodic minor and maybe even a few more like the Phrygian minor. Okay, so what we are going to do now in this part is we are going to try and color up each one of these chords and each of the chords have functions. You have the pre, you have the dominant and you have the tonic. So let's first start by coloring up the pre. So by coloring up the predominant chord, in some instances we may change the chord in some instances, we may add more notes to the chord to make it more uh, jazzy or more add more color or uh, what we sometimes call as tensions. Uh, in some instances, we may even leave the scale. So I'm going to try and keep a consistent melody as I've uh, suggested you in part one as well, which is... <laughs> Okay, get used to singing that if you haven't already. You could even pause the video and head over to part one. Okay, so now you can take the predominant chord and have a few opportunities with respect to the predominant chord. The first thing you can do is find another predominant chord. So instead of the G minor chord, you could look at an E diminished chord instead which A serves the same function, the predominant function, and B, it kind of has similar notes to the G minor chord in the first place, right? G minor is G, B flat, D, while E diminished is E, G, B. Same, almost the same notes. Yeah, so you could play which is E diminished. That's A major. Resolving to D minor. So either you do G minor, or E diminished and both roads lead to that A which then can lead to the D minor. Now you could also combine these two chords. So if you, what happens when you combine G minor and E diminished, you, you get a bigger chord, right? You'll have four notes in the entire chord. So just to give you an idea, G minor is G B flat D, right? E diminished is E G B flat. So if I add that E to the G minor chord, it creates a G minor sixth vibe. It's a very mysterious vibe. So you could go You just made the G minor a bit more sophisticated, right? Or you could look at this as an E diminished chord and add the D, which is the remaining note of the G minor chord, which is not there in the E diminished chord. So you have E diminished, add the D. And also you get a clue because the melody I composed has the D in any case, right? So it works great. So what did we do? If you're playing G minor, you add the E making it a G minor 6th or if you're playing E diminished what is that remaining note which is common between E diminished as well as G minor the D what do we call this chord we call this an E minor 7th flat 5 how do we form that again this would be E minor when you flat the 5 it becomes B flat and then minor 7th which is the D D sharp would have been major 7th, minor 7 brings it down to D. 
okay that's one flavoring you can do so what did we say so far we have the g minor chord you can also play the e diminished chord they both serve the same predominant function if you will and then that can resolve uh, to the dominant which resolves to the tonic we colored up both those chords by adding the remaining note which that chord did not have in common with each other so for e diminished we added the d for g minor we added the e creates a more sort of sophisticated sound if you will right another way to kind of color up the predominant chord is to just add some of these so called jazz tensions so if you start with a g minor you can add a seventh or what we call as a minor seventh right so that automatically makes it a bit more sophisticated right so you could add that so the seventh is f with respect to g tare you could also build it up further by adding a ninth interval so a ninth is nothing but a 2 played along with the seventh or along with the entire minor triad but generally played upper right so you're just spicing up that predominant that's the ninth that's the minor seventh minor seventh while the minor ninth you may want to even touch up or change the melody a bit because these chords will also inspire new new tune so uh, feel free feel free to change your melody but even the existing melody kind of works yeah works um you can also perhaps even add a 11th interval you know so 11th is nothing but a fourth played alongside the minor chord the minor 7th you know so you do all that okay. that's the 11th note so right so the root is g and the top interval is and that sort of a melody works really well you want to get a minor 11th sound you could also look at it like a a g bass and you can do like a d minor 7th in your right hand that's an easy way to visualize it d minor 7th over g la da da de 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 back to a and end on d so that's another way to color up your predominant chord just add these jazz tensions we've looked at the 7th we've looked at the 9th we've also looked at the 11th okay so moving on another way you can color the predominant chord is by basically replacing the chord altogether by another chord so i am going to look at two versions of b flat major which are going to help us along the predominant i use this quite often in my music as well so the first version is the sort of romantic kind of sound what did i do there b flat major 7th okay so this is b flat major along with the a at the top major 7th a quick way to play this in a more effective way on the piano is look at it as d minor in your right hand and b flat in the left hand so you go right so that major 7th gives it a more dreamy ambient or sometimes romantic kind of flavor right even if you color that major 7th further you can do and it kind of works really well because b flat major 7th shares two notes in common with the original chord we were playing which is g minor okay so 
Another chord you could look at around the same B flat root will be a B flat dominant seventh. Now this is sure to not have one note as part of the D minor scale, right? So it completely takes us a bit off the radar. Ba -da 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 -da. Sounds really beautiful though. Very heavy and you know, a very weighty sound. Da -da 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 -da. Used a lot in blues actually. Guitar players will go crazy over this. Okay, so that is replacing the original predominant options of G minor and E diminished by a non diatonic option, which is B flat dominant seventh. Now, there may be a lot of theory around this, why it works, you know, uh, you could say it's borrowed from uh, an E dominant chord you know it's borrowed and you can call it a tritone substitution but maybe we'll get into that in a later video just know that b flat major seventh sounds great b flat dominant seventh also sounds great but has a little bit more chaos going around it right now you can develop music like this Works great on the blues. Right? Okay, so what have we done so far? We've taken the B flat root, we've taken B flat major seventh, B flat dominant seventh, and that can go really nicely to the a which is the dominant and then that resolves to the tonic D minor which still feels at home right so let's just look at the same melody over the B flat major seventh version and then the same melody over the B flat dominant version <laughs> that's B flat major seventh then more tension B flat dominant Beautiful sounds, right? So, moving on, another great chord you could try out at the predominant stage is basically a chord which will lead into the dominant chord via a chapter in music called a secondary dominance. Okay, again, we can focus on this in a later theory chapter, but this chord will be the E seventh chord. The E seventh may not be part of the D minor scale, may not have anything to do with the D minor scale, but it really wants to go to the A dominant and then the A dominant wants to go to the D minor. So it's just like a chain reaction, right? The E dominant seventh chord has nothing to do with the D minor realm, but that's sort of what the B flat dominant also was doing. The E. Right, I know what a lot of musicians do, jazz musicians and the like, is they will take the E7 because it's already kind of a tense chord and what you tend to do with all these dominant 7th chords is you tend to enrich it or add even more flavor to it. So you could go, you could do E7th with basically a flat 9. How did I create a flat 9? That's a normal 9, F sharp, come down to F, that'll be an E7 flat 9. Makes the journey a lot more interesting. Right? That's this is another great option. 
could even do an E seventh sharp nine. Especially guitar music. If you're a fan of people like Jimi Hendrix, they use that voicing or that shape a lot. So this is an E seventh with a sharp nine G or flat nine F. Both. comes to a major and then comes to d minor so that's another way to color the predominant wow this is a lot of color so you go let's try and recap that entire e movement so you have e seventh or e dominant Ta-na-na. resolving to a seventh which then is still unstable so then it resolves back to d minor and then you have the even more colorful option so you will have e seventh flat nine or e7 sharp 9 so lot of options to color up your predominant chords right there right so moving forward we are going to look at a few more interesting ways to color up the predominant chord so practice these things hard and i will see you in the next part coming your way shortly and if you haven't already subscribe hit notifications so you'll get a reminder when we release the lesson and uh, consider downloading the my handwritten notes it may help you with your learning and support our channel on patreon see you in the next part